And to truly be yourself would be to be free, to be free of the person that you believe you are. It's a liberated person, if you will. To be free of the belief of what you are. To be an effortless animation or manifestation is is to recognize the self. You have to see who you are beyond the form, beyond your thoughts and beliefs, and all the various layers of identity for you to be able to enjoy that form and playing with the personality and the joy of experiencing peace. And I mean, it's silly to want to have an experience of peace and you know it'll fade away. You know, it's like but to live in such an abiding place of peace because you recognize that you are that peace. You see, peace is easy when you are peace. It's hard when you are a buddy. Joy is easy when you are joy. Ah, oh, but it's hard when you are a body, when you are a mind. What a pity it is to have the answers and yet not experience the answers. What a joy it is to have no answers and to experience all of the answers. Isn't it beautiful? So who is the self that is present or non-present? So we got the, the girls blowing kisses at each other over here. And she's in turning red colors as they blow kisses back and forth. Isn't it cute? Who is the self that <laughs> that is either present or non-present? Who is that self? Okay. Uh, what I'm having a really difficult time hearing you. The one that doesn't know it is. The one that doesn't know it is? What if what if not knowing is the best place to experience? What if not what if what if not knowing what if not knowing who you are is the easiest place to experience presence or being present or non-present? Do, do you suppose uh, there is this, uh, I love the story of Jesus hanging out. I talked about it in a YouTube video recently. I don't remember when, but all of them are blurring together at this point. But <laughs> I, um, the disciples have just been arguing, bitching back and forth with each other about who's the greatest, you know. 
and uh, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. And Jesus is there chilling, and some of the parents wanted to have him bless their children, and so they're going to bring the kids to him because, you know, when you're living in a culture that lives in continuous fear and anxiety and depression and you want somebody that is peace to bless your child. You want that energy, that vibration, that frequency. It's always been that way. You want that peace for your child or for yourself. And so they're wanting to bring their kids, these little babies. And these disciples are acting all tough. And they're like, no, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, like... When I was in charismatic circles, um, and I had all these speaking engagements, and it was funny because we were helping, we were helping uh, with some big name. I'll, I'll leave them; they'll remain nameless, but with some big name, big honjos, and we would help out with their services from time to time. And um, one of my assistants apparently was watching the assistance from these guys. So the difference is, you know, like the biggest meetings I was teaching at were a couple hundred. The biggest meetings, these days, the thousands were coming to this guy's meetings, but they had their security, you know, their assistants were basically security. And if you tried to get too close or talk to them, they would stop you when they walked out through, you know, they kind of made a little barrier for him to walk through sort of thing. And uh, I was never a big fan of it. But um, I was at a meeting. I was getting ready to teach at a meeting, and I think it was in Virginia Beach. And uh, this assistant was with me, and he almost cold cocked like one of these other ministers that was coming up behind me to talk to me or something. No, what step? What are you doing? Get away! You know who? Who are you? What you know? Like get away from Silas or sort of thing. And I was like, man, e I said, Chris. Easy. What in the world, man? Like, I, what? What is wrong with you, bro? Like, relax. This is what the disciples were doing, right? They're trying to, they're trying to play it cool and keep all these people away from Jesus. And Jesus is like, nah, bring him here. And then he has this powerful teaching moment. I don't know if the disciples got it though, Maurice. You know, the vast majority of the stories you read in the Bible, I'm pretty sure the disciples, they're pretty boneheaded. They didn't really get it. And he looks at them after they've been fighting and squalling. And he looks at them and he says, you know, unless you're like this child, this little baby, you're not even going to get to experience the kingdom of God. Forget trying to be the greatest in the kingdom. You're not even going to get a chance to experience the kingdom. And they're like, oh, we don't really know what he means. We're just going to keep on, you know, sort of thing. It was obvious that they really didn't know what he meant. But I'll tell you what he was talking about. And that is a baby doesn't have a self yet. It's easy. A baby is just rolling around, sucking his thumb, goo goo and gaga, drinking from the tit, enjoying life. He's just enjoying the fuck out of life, man. Have you ever looked at a baby and just, who are you? It's mysterious, isn't it? You're like, who are you? Like, what in the world is this? And then over time, what happens is the parents slap a religion on them and a name. Slap them with the name right out of the wood, like, bam! Might as well tattoo it on their ass or something. This is who you are. And then we slap a religion on them. And we, you know, you slap them with a, a gender. And it's not enough just to have a penis or a vagina, but you got to identify as that gender and be manly if you have a penis and feminine if you don't. I'm just being real. You guys are okay with it, I know. And 
over the course of time, this little baby becomes the disciple that doesn't know shit because it thinks it knows a lot. But in actuality, when it didn't know shit, it actually knew the most. It was closer to the kingdom of God. You were closer to the kingdom of God when you were first born. I'm talking about, it, obviously I'm talking about the you that you're experiencing in the form. It was closer to the kingdom of God in manifestation when you were first born than you've ever been in your life. In any other moment, you have done nothing but age. There is, however, for you a timeless mind that is present in this moment. And that timeless mind is free of all of that aging and all of the information and all of the stuff that we're trying to accumulate and grab a hold of and become. place where there is no more self that I've grabbed a hold of and holding on to for dear life, you know? Do you think it was easier, Kevin, when you were just sucking your thumb, rolling around in the crib? Yeah, just like that. Do you think that was easier? Or do you, what do you think? You think that was easy or do you think, uh, you think it's easier being it's so a man? Easy. No, I don't even remember it. <laughs> That's right. It was so, how many of you guys remember rolling around your crib sucking your thumb? Like most people don't have memories past three and even the ones that they have when they're three, a lot of times were, were actually programmed into your, into your mind because you've heard the story so many times you actually believe that that's the way it looked. That's the way it was. But very, very few people actually have memories from that long ago. And if they do, they're very faint. Do you think it was because your memory wasn't very good back then? <laughs> how, how quickly were you learning when you were just rolling around in the crib? How quickly were you uh, learning? Probably quicker than you ever have in your life as well. You, you were learning quicker than you ever have. You know what the only difference the only difference was is that you didn't have an identity to hold on to stuff. You you accumulated so much stuff in your mind. That's why you probably forget. Well, that's definitely part of it. It's kind of like a computer system that's all uh, loaded down. It's uh, the memory is so full and there's no room for anything else, right? But it's also because the more that you begin to develop an identity the more that, see that identity is built upon knowledge and um, that I so that identity is continually trying to grab a hold of more and more and more and more knowledge and whereas before there was an identity you could take in information but it wasn't identifying you matter of fact so much so little a little baby boy rolling around in the crib well, no, 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 no. And, he's, and he rips off his diaper and he's just playing with his he's playing with his wiener. He's just playing with it. And when he stands up in the crib and he goes, and he's just completely innocent and pure. Not identified at the body at all. You know what happens a couple years later? Parents say they come into the crib, they say, No, don't do that, Dad. You shouldn't do that. No, 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 no. Don't touch your peen. Don't touch that. It's dirty, they say. Oh, it's dirty. And then they say, you're a boy. You're supposed to be proper. Don't, don't do these things. Be proper. And you start to develop this image of yourself. This identity. And you try really hard to be good. And you're never quite good enough, are you? And it's a lot of work trying to be a good boy or a good girl. Well, but had they not come in and said, that's naughty, it would, there would have been nothing. It had just been a perfectly pure moment. Ah, what parents are going in and going, ah, look at that cute little wiener. 
You're such a good boy with that cute little wiener. It's so cute. Parents don't do that. No, that's gross. No, put your diaper back on. Stay clothed. You know. This has nothing to do with being clothed or not clothed. It has to do with identity. My point is very simple. The more that you know and that we want to know, we want to know so much and we want to accumulate things to our existence because of an identity. And there's this base layer of identity. It's just, this is literally how um, religious systems have thrived for thousands and thousands of years because they are heaping information upon you. If you do this, then you're going to be good. If you do this, then you can be better. You can be a better version of yourself. If you do this, then you can cleanse yourself or you can be holy or you can fix your DNA or you can have this. If you do this, and there's always something to do, always another experience to try to have. But before there was all that identity, it was really easy. Every moment.